Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Kellen here from Start Your Systems, and welcome to another edition of Track Walk in MX Simulator. And yeah, I know it's weird because we're not having the uh, little track preview lap where uh, I ride in first person, and you get to see like kind of a third person view, and I talk about the track and who made it, etc. Uh, but I am running out of time to be able to do these track walks. In fact, this track walk is going to be a very peculiar one, and I'll explain why in a minute. But first of all, this track, I believe will have been built by Stephen Barrington. If not, it'll just have been updated by some people in the RF track crew. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Round 12, Indiana again. And uh, something may look a little bit familiar about this track for uh, any of you sim diehards right now who may rip it up in 01 on the rig. Uh, I'm playing the 2015 version of Indiana right now. Uh, the reason being, we are well, it's today, Tuesday. We are a week and two days from the final MX Simulator National of the Year, which means that we're well before when the track is supposed to be released. And uh, my inside scoop as of right now tells me this track will not be updated. If it is, it will be very, very minor updates. And uh, it'll just be like a few sections just either smoothed out and fixed a little bit or something. But uh, not much is going to change on this track. Therefore, I've decided to just use last year's track and do a track walk on it because I'm gone right now. And uh, Jeremy said he would maybe step in and do track walk this week when I was gone if the track was different. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that it got done regardless. So I'm doing it and like it's not even sure right now whether this track will stay the same or what but uh the the one thing that i guess could be cool about this from an outsider's point of view as this actually will be the first track that we ever repeat as a track walk in mx simulator technically because it's the same exact track just uh playing it again but jeremy actually did track walk on this track last year because i was in utah and then flying to their house uh, well, Nate's house, but their place in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, which Hinners lives pretty close to, and that's when I hung out with Hinners last year. Um, so I didn't do track walk on this track last year. So this is actually different a little bit in the fact that you guys get to see me play the track this year. And because it's a pro national, I mean, it's going to be pretty similar. So, yeah, we're sorry. I know that the track is the same track. And there's not much that have cha has changed. Um, if it if it is going to be a brand new track, which like I said, right now, a week and two days out, it doesn't sound like it because they haven't even started working on it. If if it is, um, then again, it's not going to be very different than the one I'm playing right now. So when you are able to download it, if you uh, are not an RF member. It's going to look and feel pretty similar to this, so it's not going to be way off or anything like that. Uh, and, and like I said, we would not do this if it was uh, a Randy track um, that wasn't a Pro National, that wasn't going to be similar every year. Like na Pro Nationals are pretty damn similar every year. They don't change much on the tracks. They change a few sections here and there. And I believe that the RF crew may update those. I don't know. Um, but just for the sake of actually getting some stuff done and not missing out on an episode of track walk, I figured I'd go ahead and take the initiative, get this done so that, um, we don't have to worry about it while I'm on my trip. And, uh, if it's there and it's ready to go, then Jeremy just can focus on streaming. If he is back this week, I know we had Storkin do it last week. Um, and hopefully he did a good job because it hasn't happened yet for me, but for you guys it has. And uh, either Storkin or Jeremy will be streaming this race this week. But either way, uh, should be a pretty banging final round, judging by the points as they stand with two rounds to go when I'm recording this video. Um, the championships are quite close, that is for sure. Uh, I think Honeywell right now is about 10, 11 points behind Seidhoff. And Root is three points back of Mullins in the 450 championship. So it's pretty likely, judging by that statistic, that these championships will be going down to this final round and may have, you know, it could have be that they've already been decided, but it would pretty much mean that, you know, like Honeywell doesn't show up uh, to race Buds, Seidhoff goes 1-1, wins the championship. That's pretty much like one of the few scenarios that could play out, but it basically mean that uh, the 
championship contenders that are in second would have to not show up or just uh, DNF both motos or something for it to play out like that. So going down to the wire, these sim championships are crazy. The 450 championship as it is right now, again, is uh, the closest I believe we've had a 450 national championship since uh, 2012 when Tyson beat Tyler Crane by just two points to win the championship. And to date, that is Tyson's only MX Simulator national championship, um, which seems hard to believe being as good as he is he may have not even have a national championship because he didn't win it the year after that Zach Dupuy won it so if Crane had come through and won in 2012 we'd be looking at a MX Simulator uh, without a Tyson Fresquez outdoor national championship he won't win it this year it's between Root and Mullins at this point in the 450 class what a save that was um, but a little history could be made on both ends of the spectrum if either of those guys win. If Mullins is able to pull it off and win the championship here in two days or a day when you guys see it on the live stream, he'll be the first ever two-time Premier Class MX Simulator National Champion. Um, which again seems impossible to believe. The very first National Championship held in MX Simulator was in 2011, even though the game came out in 2008. They did a Supercross season in 2010, but the first like official national season that they ran was 2011. I don't remember how many rounds it was. I don't think it was the full schedule. They made as many tracks as they could. Um, and RF was sort of indirectly running it at the time, but RF didn't exist at the time. It was just Sween and Wheels putting on the events uh, with JLV's help and stuff like that. Austin Jones won the championship that year when they were still on 250Fs. The 450 had not been introduced into the game yet. Um, and at the time, it was the premier class because there was no other class available. It was the pro racing scene. And Jones won it. Jones is one of the better MX Simulator players of all time. So it's, I think it's good that he ends up on the list of national champions. 2012, we already said Tyson just beat Crane to it by two points. 2013, Zach Dupuy, our uh, teammate, my good buddy, SYS racing rider, won it. I uh, believe he won that championship by, I want to say, about 12, 13 points. Again, Tyler Crane taking it down to the wire. Um, controversial end to that, that uh, everybody seems to think I had a part in fixing it, but I definitely did not. I was not in the server for much of that night. Um, so that's that story will live for another day when I will tell it. Uh, 2014 was Alexis Leclerc, who we have seen almost none of this year, and I'm actually a little bit interested because I can't seem to remember if Leclerc scored enough points in Supercross, because he hasn't raised a single outdoor, to retain his number 7 career number. He might have already done it, not too sure. Uh, it was a big deal two years ago when Shaq, two times Supercross champion uh, Brian Haskell, lost the 7 because he did not score 25 points. So we may be looking at Leclerc losing his number seven this year, but we'll see. And last year, 2015, Jesse Mullins was the champion. So, as you may have known by uh, listening to that story as well, um, Hunter Root also stands to be the seventh different MX Simulator national champion in this game in the Premier class, which, again, fucking crazy um, that it's been that all over the board and that we haven't had a repeat champion in the national championship even though Tyson has won three Supercross championships in that time Shaq Brian Haskell won two straight Supercross championships in 2010 and 2011 and then uh, Root and Downen split up Tyson's three titles with a championship in 2014 and 2015 Root won in 2015 so that is kind of your list of major Race Factory Gaming Premier Class champions. But it's interesting, I mean, if, if Root did end up winning this, another thing that is kind of crazy about Root perhaps winning this championship um, is he was not there for the first round. And uh, a lot of criticism was met with that. He actually was trying to boycott the series because he didn't believe in the pay for play system. So all of you people out there that are against RF might find yourself fancying Hunter Root a little bit more now that you know that fact. Um, he didn't race Hangtown. He uh, waited till the last possible minute to buy a membership because uh, he hated the system and then ended up not racing Hangtown because he had no time on the track or uh, something. I don't know. But uh, 
This may be the first ever championship, as far as I know, in RF or MX Simulator Pro history, uh, uh, discluding EMF, because I'm not 100% sure on that, that someone missed a round and still won the championship, which would be crazy and just goes to show how uh, talented Hunter Root is to be able to bring this back. Uh, the thing is, is that Root probably would have won last year and beat Mullins had he not... Uh, rode backwards on the track two corners into the Thunder Valley National and was subsequently suspended for the next round which lost him a huge chunk of points to Mullins in the championship and ultimately he lost it to Mullins. That'd be pretty crazy if Root is able to miss Hangtown and still come back and win this championship and I think at that point you'd have to say he deserved it because he really rode his ass off to get back into the points. I think Mullins won that opening round so he's been the championship leader all the way throughout. Um, although Root very well could have just stolen it away at Bud's Creek, not 100% sure. Only a three-point gap, so two wins for Root at Bud's Creek means the points lead is in his hands going into the final round. It's it's crazy, man. These Sim guys, they are aliens. And uh, as I stand right now with five motos, give or take, less to go because we still need to run rerun Millville, and uh, Indiana and Bud's hasn't happened yet, I won't be racing any of those five motos and I'm 53 points up on 10th in the championship, sitting 7th in the 450 class. And uh, I feel like I've had like a decent year, and even that, I'm nowhere near the points tally that those guys have up front. So they're aliens, man. They are fucking aliens. But uh, this is going to be a short version of Track Walk. I'm going to wrap it up here after the fifth lap. So again, the track may have been updated. Not 100% sure, but I hope you guys at least liked our little tidbit here on the Indiana track for the final round of the Nationals. And uh, again, we'll be sure to include that download link once it becomes available to the public. If you guys like this video, please hit it with a comment and uh, like it and all that jazz. Maybe subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys on the next edition of Track Walk or any of our other series here on Star Your Systems. So long for now.